on the stream. Here we go, guys. Welcome back to Slam vs. Doubt Game 2 in their upper bracket finals. Best of three for the Escape Gaming Masters. I'm joined once again by T90 and Nilkford, and we'll do the usual routine of uh, T90 taking over to explain the sieves and the players and I guess even the map. All right, well, okay. Did the colors switch for you? What color was Doubt last game? Sorry. Doubt was blue last game, and now he's red. Okay, so I'm gonna... That's gonna be hard for me to get used to, we but I wanted G. to make sure I wasn't G. going crazy. We can ult G. Yeah, I wanted to make sure. Wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy. So, uh, I mean, we can keep these colors, but uh, anyway, we have doubt on the left hand side. Whatever you choose to do with the colors, Zach is completely fine. In the blue, he's playing as the Khmer, and then on the right we have Slam playing as the Vietnamese, a civilization that he did so well with versus the Viper. And I said this before the game actually launched. He destroyed Viper. It, was, it wasn't close. It was a perfect performance from Slam. I think that Slam is preferring the Vietnamese because of the versatility, because he can go for that special unique unit, run around the map, and get map control. It was really impressive how he ran around this wood in the middle to run around the walls and attack Viper when he played him. So I'm interested to see if he will do that again. The maps are pretty self-explanatory, guys, because you have two stones, two golds, and... For the most part, you will have secondary resources, but for the most part, those stones and golds are in the bases of these players, which are small palisade walls. They are far apart from one another, actually on opposite sides of the wood. And in this case, I think they're going to have to run a little bit further than Slam did versus Viper. Zach, you might be able to correct me there, but I yeah, think I'm Well, the thing I'm picking on up that. on here is the north of the map. It's such an easy wall between the two tree yeah. lines that th this kind of wood extends out and then it meets up with the small wood on the left. This is an easy, easy wall and that could actually delay any early game aggression if one player decides to go out here and wall this off. Although, if I remember correctly, with the game um, Slam played against the Viper, Viper did wall one of the sides of the map, and Slam just ran around the other side with his Rattan Archers. Yeah. Um, I'm interested, though, to see how this matchup goes, because as Nilkford was saying before this game started, Doubt, and I guess as we saw last game as well, even... Um, hold on, have I... Doubt is in the red now for me. I swear that the colors just swapped. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the colors probably swapped, just... Left side doubt, right yeah. side slam. If you don't know your lefts and rights, you're going to have a problem, guys. Yeah. But just look at the bottom right, and you can see the players. But <laughs> Doubt is yeah, in the red. Fine. Okay, we just clarified. Doubt is in the red. Slam is in the blue. Um, the team color thing just doesn't work very well because it swaps around when you change perspective and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to say that we saw it even in the last game. Nilpford said it before this game. Doubt got a bit greedy. He likes to boom. He likes to have a big economy to, to uh, rely on. And as the Khmer, that can be incredibly good because the Khmer are extremely extremely strong in the late game. Um, they are a very gold intense civilization. They, they require a large economy um, to make their unique unit. They're really powerful scorpions and even their um, their elephants, which are also very strong um, in, in the Rise of the Rajas. And I can yeah, give and... you some intel on how to do the perfect boom with Khmer. Since you don't need any buildings in uh, to advance to the next ages, you can basically instantly click up from feudal age to castle age and should not build a single villager. So just go up with two more villagers. You have to send four on gold instead of three or three on gold if you do not loom and just go up with probably 29 and you can instantly click up. And that's what Doubt should do here. Let's see if it's playing it perfectly. So Nilly, what you're saying is, and I'm just gonna talk about this so the viewers know, Normally with the standard fast castle, you have to get those buildings up. So in that time, you would create two additional villagers. So what you're saying is what Doubt should do is he should just create the two additional villagers in the first place to make up for that. That way he has the added economy. Exactly, exactly, Tilani. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's awesome for the Khmer because that gives them... Well, it doesn't give them a huge edge, but it puts them into the castle age very early, and that allows them to then get their boom on um, as fast as they can. It's, it's a nice thing. But then again, you know, Slam played a great game last game, but let's remember the difference. Viper, when he played against Slam, was very aggressive. Are we predicting Doubt to be aggressive if he is going to be planning to boom, perhaps? Uh, I would 
hazard a guess that the answer to that is no. And that might mean that Slam is able to uh, take the map control very early and pressure Doubt quite a lot as well. Yeah, the one thing I want to talk about now, all very good points, is the scouting. These players are luring in deer. They don't know where each other are located. So let's say mm. Slam, for example, on the right side, goes down to scout, and he doesn't see that there's this easy wall. Or Doubt does the same thing. I don't think that both players will miss that, but I think Doubt will like to see this tree line because Doubt can wall it up. If he wants to boom like we're thinking with his civilization, this will prevent Slam from raiding from this side and he'll have to run the other direction. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think even on the right side, it's a very easy wall as well. But it's much further yeah. to send a villager to wall that. And if you actually think about it, Slam has the advantage there on the south side to be able to wall. Whereas Doubt is much further away from this small hole. Uh, Slam actually sending his scout now and he's going across the top. So he will find that. And he might keep that in mind and maybe even position his scout in this gap just to make sure that Doubt doesn't wall it um, once he is preparing to attack because Slam would really not be very happy with the situation if he comes to attack and Doubt's actually walled this up. So for the time being, going to be annoying, probably maybe even try and attack Doubt's scout, I thought, there, just to disrupt this deer luring. He, the, he's going to disrupt it anyway, and that's a good thing for Slam yeah. because these deer are a nice food boost to have, and it, it means you don't have to move on to farms so quickly if you're taking the deer instead. That saves you a little bit of wood, and that means you can go for your second and third TC potentially a little faster and have a bit more wood in surplus after you've got those uh, go age more. upgrades. Yeah. Who's going to win this scout? I I'm it's going to be it. doubt. It's going to be doubt. It no, it's um, okay. <laughs> Man. It's going to say it's so close. I thought um, it was doubt. And that's huge because doubt has left three deer stranded. Mm hmm. And, yeah, you probably got the colors confused. He has three deer stranded, and he was already struggling to bring them in in the first place when Slam was running his scout in. So that's only one deer lured in for doubt. And those are resources that are huge. I don't know how many Slam got, I think he got but two. there's only one outside of his walls. So he at least got two, yeah. Yeah, I think he got two. You can kind of see them rotting away. It's just tiny, tiny specks of red on the floor next to his farms. Um that's maybe not too huge, but I, I think the big. I mean, obviously, it's going to affect slightly, but I think the biggest thing here is actually that Doubt doesn't know what the map looks like now, and he has no way to know. So he doesn't know how easy this is to wall. He doesn't know um, which direction might be the best to come from. I, I guess he would assume that the top side is best since Slam Scout came from that direction. But Doubt is playing this very blind, and if the, all these farms are anything to go by, it looks like he's going to be playing this very greedy as well. Yeah, he needs to get to the castle age to make a decision on what to do. I think he has to play it safe now, and he has to boom up a little bit, but he certainly needs to scout like you said. Guys, at this level, they have so many different things they can do. They can always switch up their routine, but to switch up your routine, you have to know what's coming, and... Doubt has no clue where Slam is, he has no clue what Slam is planning on doing, and that will be the case for, well, a while now, well, as he probably is not planning on making military units. I'll tell you what Slam is planning on doing, taking stone and building a castle, making rattan archers. It's worked once before, and I think he's hoping it's going to work again. Now, the question That's really is, can exciting. Doubt defend that? And it's so tough, because this is only a palisade wall. Yeah. I really, I really like the move from Slam. I think we knew going into this, choosing Vietnamese, he would do this. But I'm, I'm glad that we've confirmed that fact now. I would also add as well, uh, this is a really big point actually, I think, that both players are going up to the Castle Age on 28 villagers, and Slam still has the faster Castle Age time. Even yeah. though he built the market and the blacksmith. Now, obviously, Doubt hasn't had to spend the wood on the market and blacksmith. So that's actually a lot of wood saved. It's a, it's a real good eco bonus at this point. Um, but at the same time, Slam is still going to be there at a great time. And he's going to have that castle ready to go. So Doubt is really not as far ahead as maybe he thinks at this stage. Okay, I'm going to do a Nilly prediction and stream. Keep in mind that if I get this wrong, it is just to make Nilly look good later on. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm seriously, I seriously think what we're going to see is two TCs immediately from Doubt, and he may be expecting these archers to come in, so he'll probably defend with the Siege Workshop. Yeah. 
Slam obviously going to go with that castle and go aggressive. He needs to be careful because he's done this in the past where he's gone with an aggressive approach early castle age, last game for example, and he didn't build up his economy behind that. If Doubt's able to defend enough, then Doubt's economy will pay off. So there's small windows that these players have, but Villager's running out of the base of Slam. I, I agree with everything that you said, apart from maybe the Siege Workshop. I, I, I personally think defending with the Siege Workshop is logical and should be done. However, yeah. no gold income for Doubt. And he needs a few villagers on gold in order to afford mangonels. That could be a problem. But look at this. He's got nearly a thousand wood in the bank. That, of course, is due to not having to buy, uh, build the uh, market and blacksmith. And he's got so many farms up already. We'll see what his defense is going to be, but Slam already moving out with the villagers, and he's got balls here because the castle right on the, the, the gold outside of Doubt's base as Doubt's building his second and third town center. Yeah, this is the cattle drop, as you would say. This is great. <laughs> um, the castle's going up, and the palisade walls are so weak, the castle will bust it down, and it's going to force an immediate response from Doubt, who is putting up two TCs, like I said, He's going for a monastery. Man, Man. Doubt is going to need a siege workshop. He, is, he does have that TC up on the gold, so he will have gold income. But without a scout, this could be bad for Doubt. And man, my rhyme. Whew, that was Ooh. good. Yeah, <laughs> even <laughs> even the castle, though, threatens his front gold as well. Uh, the one even mm -hmm. inside of the palisade wall. How good are monks going to be here against Rattan archers? How many monks can he afford? One, because how much gold has he got? None. Uh, I, I'm really concerned for Doubt now. This castle from Slam, in, in Arena, that would be considered ballsy, but the fact that Doubt lost his scout, so much weight has been placed on that now because Slam is able to put this castle up confidently and even afford Town Center because Slam just don't care. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, this is definitely what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Slam making the Rattan Archers. He's doing that now. No Siege Workshop yet from Doubt, but I think that's his there only option here. Monk's definitely not going to work out. Yep, there it is. But still only three villagers on gold. Like, he's so late to get these villas out on gold here. and He will have enough now. He's got a town center and he's got the gather point set there. Oh, but Doubt, he's he's under yep. so much pressure. He has to defend this. And there's three Rattan archers out before the Siege Workshop even comes up. If these had been a little earlier, he might have even denied the Siege Workshop or delayed it completely. But uh, Slam won't be able to do that he's coming in though and i guess the advantage here for doubt is that he does have three town centers and they can yeah. protect his villages a lot slam going to have to find a way through and maybe taking advantage of this really high pierce armor to uh to run through the tc since doubt actually doesn't have fletching or bodkin arrow done yet they're going to do very little damage to these uh these rattan archers well, Doubt has done, this is almost arena right now, mm. almost an arena strat with the castle drop and now the units running in, lower eco approach. Doubt has done the right thing, he's walling in towards his town centers, but Slam has done the right thing here to send the Rattan archers around. Maganel is coming out from Doubt now, Zach. Yeah, that Manganel is going to be a pain, but I think as Rez said yesterday, the really nice thing about the Rattan Archer is the fact they have six base attack. It actually allows them to do one extra damage to the Manganel, essentially doubling their damage output uh, versus a crossbowman, for example. And um, with a little bit of micro, he might not have too much of a hard time taking this Manganel down. We've already seen some fantastic micro from Slam this tournament, and he's going to look to keep this up, of course. Yeah, and he's going to get a villager as well. Yeah, he... Uh, if he can get the Magna now, that'd be huge. It'll take him a couple more shots, but I mean, what is Doubt going to do? Well, he... except more Maganels. Oof. That shot looked like it was going to do more damage than it did. Uh, obviously, once yeah, Doubt gets a second Manganel, it's going to be much harder for Slam to do damage. But yeah, I, I like the fact that he killed the villager here instead of getting another hit on the Manganel. He was anticipating that that villager would start repairing. And of course, he has to kill the villager in order to kill the Manganel. But I mean, we're just focused on four Rattan archers here. There's more coming in. Slam! Going to be uh, going to town on these Manganels. And let's just see if he can handle this. It's, it's going to be tough. To, to micro this army and immediately getting hit by a mangonel shot there yeah against two mangonels it's going to be a different story it's really going to take a lot to micro this down now but i'll tell you what slam has done a good job of keeping his units alive and all he needs to do is just hold the map control and keep doubt under pressure doubt has gotten housed a lot in fact he's housed right now 
and he's lost some villagers here. And what micro here from Slam? This is fantastic micro. He is always, always so good at timing his splits just right. Um, and even if he doesn't kill these mangonels, he will be killing some villagers. But yeah, all in all, I think Doubt came on out on top there, to be honest. I mean, all the yeah. Raton are just going to get cleaned up now. Nice little attack ground from Doubt, I think, just to finish that off. And... In, all in all, one Rattan Archer makes it out with one HP. So Slam, maybe not having the best time, but he's not completely neglected his economy in order to do this aggression. He does have two town centers, and that could even mean that he would go for a fast Imperial, or a faster Imperial. Uh, since Doubt's going to be spending more food on making um, villagers, Slam could save on that food with only two TCs and go for a faster Imperial time, just to try and keep that pressure up. But so far, I don't feel like he's achieved enough. Well, the one thing I'll say is that Doubt was idled so much, I feel like his eco isn't as strong as we would think. I'm comparing populations. 58 right now for Slam. Doubt is at 57. Obviously, there are Rats and Archers going into that population for Slam, but there's not a lot of them. So I think it's relatively close. Slam has the map control, and he is going up to another town center now, Zach. So all things mm. considered, I think okay. Slam is slightly ahead at the moment because he's continuing to pester Doubt. Yeah, he's going to be able to actually get the third TC. I thought maybe the two TCs would happen, but he's yeah. Yeah, going for three, uh, which is all good. Looks like Doubt trying to grab <gasps> some stone and losing three villagers, four villagers there. And Slam actually wow. managing to get stuff done here. This is really nice for him. That's exactly the kind of thing he's looking for. And we're talking about economy, and this hmm. is exactly what the Rats and Archers are here for, just to keep Doubt suffocated. And losing villagers on that stone is not going to be good for Doubt. He has... Two of his stones forward, and also he has that gold forward underneath the castle. So eventually, I think Doubt needs to think about pushing out here. Yeah, What's but he going to do? Where is he going to push, though? Because this castle actually prevents him from going around the top side. Uh, if he leaves, if he tries to go to the top side of the map, the castle will, will see that and start attacking him. I, I think Doubt's ahead by maybe four or five villagers at this stage, which is not enough, in my opinion. Um... So all in all, I'd say Slam is ahead. I agree with you on that. And I'm interested to know what Nilford thinks about this situation at the moment. Oh, the resources yeah. of doubt, Nilly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's looking to click oh, Imperial yeah. Age. And he will get the castle up as well. I think he will have the successful hold here. The manual shots were pretty great. It was a very tight area there to micro for Slam. That was the main difference. Doubt's eco was better. He had the manuals out in time, and there was no space where Stam could really go, where Doubt could have been hurt heavily. And now I think Defensive Castle, earlier traps, is looking good for Doubt. It really is. I mean, a Trebs and Onagers is going to be so rough for Slam. When Slam played Viper on this map, Viper tried it, but at that point, Viper had a lot less economy than Doubt. In fact, the Imperial Age times were different. So much was different at that stage. So this is going to be a really hard thing for Slam to counter. Zach, going into this, do you think there's anything Slam should do, or what should we expect from Slam? Well, he's trying to de de delay this castle from Doubt. Now, Doubt actually does have enough stone to place it down, but you keep seeing him going back to this stone mine just to try and kill some mm -hmm. more villagers over here, and he does successfully get a couple, but, you know, Doubt's got enough for the, the castle now, and since he's going to be Imperial first, Doubt should be coming straight out with the Trebs, and maybe that could cause uh, Slam to lose his castle. That could be a real problem for him. Um, so far as well, losing quite a lot of Rattan Archers out, out on this left-hand side. Um, unable to take the Mangonels down and taking some big shots in the process. Oh, he's gotten wrecked. <laughs> he's I gotten think wrecked. Only three remaining. What I was going to say after that was really just, I think Slam needs to uh, wall up, and he is doing that. I was going to say he needs to wall this, uh, this choke point and um, be ready to defend a later Imperial uptime. Slam might potentially even lose this town center out here, and he's already, look at this, bringing the villagers back, evacuation time, because he knows what's about to come. Uh, a big air raid from, uh, from Doubt as he gets the Trebs out in the Imperial Age. Yeah, good response from Doubt. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but he had more villagers for longer. He's in the Imperial Age. Treb queued up immediately does have stables, which is an interesting choice, and we'll see where he goes with that. Yeah. But the walls from Slam have a very good point, Zach. I mean, he knows that if he loses this castle, he can just run away and then just 
build up back at his base. So this isn't, I mean, certainly it's not going to be easy for Slam, but if his economy's right, he might be able to mass forces back at his base and then just push out on this choke point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that might be his game plan now. I mean, he is up to the Imperial Age as well. He's certainly not slow by any means. Um, mm -hmm. And Slam also working on collecting some relics. He's just got one now. He's picked up another one. Doubt relic count is nil. So Slam... Gonna get the relics here, and uh, you know, it, it's not too important at this stage, but it's gonna be worth thinking about the relics as the game goes by. And look at this, three sneak villagers on the bottom of the map. We'll keep an eye on those as the game goes by, but I think Slam's strategy, similar to what he did with Viper, is just split push. He's gonna try and split his army, try and put the pressure on at all sides, and uh, keep Doubt distracted on the flank. And, and make sure that Doubt just doesn't put all of his attention on this one castle and pushing through this one choke point. That way, he can stall for time and get himself to the Imperial Age as well, where he can then do some damage. Yeah, that's a really good point. Slam did that against Viper, and the versatility of the Rattan Archers, so obvious. So maybe if he comes from both sides, it'd be very difficult for Doubt. Doubt is going for a very slow push. However, he has researched Cavalier and is massing those. So they'll be a little bit faster. This castle is being repaired by Slam, so he's trying to buy himself a little yeah. bit of time. This game is heating up. Yeah, I think we're going to see maybe a long game here because I do think that both players are going to hit this kind of point where... Oh, big mangonel shot on the left side. Slam not able to really do too much damage with these rats and archers right now, but at least causing some distraction. Uh, but I think this game has the potential to be very close. Population counts are just 10 apart, uh, even less. And... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Vietnamese, the Rattan Archer, as you say, very versatile, but Doubt here with this edge going into the Imperial Age, really evening things out, in my opinion. Uh, what do you think the best unit composition for Doubt is going to be, Nilpford? And do you think it's going to be the Cavalier that he's producing now? Well, we had an arena game in um, Rise of the Rajas, a uh, Battle for Encore tournament, and there he went for better elephants and two arrow scorpions and that's basically the absolute best army composition you could go for but that was the 40 villagers more a lot of time more time to boom more relics more map control and for now he just needs to gain some ground and take some some early fights because now he has a better eco and he can do some damage now so i think cavaliers is the right option now yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, he can't really raid with these Cavaliers because of this double-layer stone wall. Um, <laughs> this, this was quite funny, the villagers walling themselves in with the houses and the palisade. Again, just kind of stalling for time. Uh, Doubt will take down the monastery, denying the relic for now, and he will regain access to his gold. And you see that immediately, he's putting those uh, mining camps down to try and take the gold here. Uh, that's good for him. But, you know, I'm still interested to see because so far, okay, he's taken out the castle. He's um, removed all the villagers from this area, denying the TC. And, oh no! Slam! Nearly letting those uh, those cavalier into his economy there. Nearly going through that second gate. But those gates are going to be down pretty quickly anyway as these three trebuchets deploy. Will Slam be able to defend? Right now I'm not seeing a whole lot from him. Stable's coming out. And what is he producing? Cavalier as well. Interesting. Nearly, I'm going to have to let you continue. So go right ahead, guys. This game is fantastic. Yeah, uh, so, T90, I think you need to be on 5.1, by the way. Just uh, just saying. Um, <laughs> Slam, yeah, yeah, Slam, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Slam right now with the Cavs, uh, doubt the same. It's, it's interesting that both these civs going for Cavalier because it's not really what these civs are known for. Yeah, absolutely not. But as I said several times, I don't think that Vietnamese are such a good option in long games. And I think in Hideout, Ah, I think it's not the greatest choice. And now Slam needs to go for a monk defense. And yeah, Vietnamese monks are missing two crucial upgrades. I think they're missing mm, redemption and I believe Percy or something. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, new civs, it's hard to remember exactly what's going on there. But I would say that the monks are going to be very effective if Doubt continues making Cavalier. Already we see two conversions. And there's three monasteries here for Slam. The only issue with that I have with monks is that it's very expensive on the gold cost. And Slam only has one relic right now. There's still plenty of gold left on the map, but... I mean, let's just see. It's really difficult with monks to say what's going to happen because they either fall flat and do nothing or they manage to get a lot of conversions and completely turn the game around. What I would say, though, is that I'm kind of surprised. Doubt isn't really pushing out. He's destroyed the gates and he's just taking his time. He's not packed up the trebs. He's not, like, pushed through here with any sizable army. He's maybe not feeling like he's ready at this stage. And even after seeing the three monasteries and seeing the monks, he's still making cavalier. I think he might be preparing for a push through the middle. And Onager is still in his space. Mm. He has all the cavaliers. But maybe he just thinks, okay, I saw a lot of monks and monasteries from Slam. And the worst thing you could do against monks is attack with small numbers. So it's actually good that he wasn't attacking early on. Yeah, trying to mass the units up and then, you know, if a couple of units gets converted, he still has more than enough mass just to push through and take the win. Conversions, though, for Slam coming in. The Onager's at the back uh, as well. Slam here trying to get some uh, some rush down onto the Trebs and prevent them from taking down his TC here. That's going to fall. One Treb, very low, should go down. And Slam now really looking for those conversions and he needs them because he's very outnumbered over here. How many conversions are coming in, though? It's not enough by any means, and I think that this castle is certainly going to be going up. That's a huge problem for Slam. He could potentially lose this entire left side if this castle stays, and well, it will go up. There you go. So Slam now in a bit of trouble. Doubt absolutely overwhelming him, and as you said, maybe looking to cut through the middle of the map as well with those onagers. Yeah, and it's always sweet to convert some onagers as well, but... He simply does not have the tech for it and now losing all the monasteries, all the stables, building another defensive castle there in the range of the traps already. Ah, Slam needs to buy time, but I'm not really sure if that's the right option. I think he needs to fall back even further. Yeah, he really has to fall back. After losing the monasteries as well, it means he can't make more monks. And even if he could make more monks from the monasteries, he doesn't really have the gold to do it. He's down to just 200 gold now. And only one monk is being queued up as he makes a trebuchet here. And his trebuchet here also... Sorry, um, Castle here also getting... Um, attacking the towers. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, raid. Nice. I did not see that on the minimap. But yeah, Slam coming in with the uh, Cavalier. Disrupting Doubt's economy at this stage. I mean, how much damage can he really do? Doubt is immediately coming around with his own Cavalier here. And Doubt has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, yeah, the advantage in upgrades too. I don't think Slam's done enough, but he is building more stables down here. He's looking for more angles. Uh, Doubt, meanwhile, continuing to be aggressive at the north. And actually losing his trebuchet there. Slam might just be able to hold on, actually. This is interesting. At least his counterattack brought all of these Cavalier back to defend. Yeah, I think that was a bit of an overreaction here by Doubt. He only had two Cavaliers at the front, and therefore five Cavaliers of Slam were able to kill three traps of Doubt. And mm. suddenly it seems like Slam is holding again at the side. Now back to roughly 10 monks, back on Cavalier production. Then, yeah, we are looking at pop 154 for Slam, and Dowd is only at pop 167 at the time. But so only the center ahead. of the map, the center of the map, we're seeing the cut through from Doubt now. And uh, that means that Cavalier into Slam's economy, and now we're going to see the same thing. Slam's going to have to bring some units back, and what has he got? He's got some very slow-moving monks, and that's about it. However, in the north at the same time, Doubt could potentially lose his castle here, as he doesn't have any trebuchets remaining, but Doubt's... Uh, Cavalier going to town in Slam's economy and he's going to deny a huge amount of gold there as well. Denying the gold a really big deal right here because Doubt, uh, Slam sorry, really needs that in order to make those monks and make more Cavalier. Now the monks are moving back, the castle from Doubt at the top going to go down and this game it feels really close but I, I've got to say Doubt with the score lead very heavily and this raiding as well being very devastating to Slam's economy. 
Yeah, indeed. Oh god, so many idle villagers, so many villagers that will actually die here. And look at this, he's sending in like 30 villagers trying to fit into 1cc, but it was full in the first place. So, oh god, they're all running to their death and the monks now slowly coming back, yeah. getting the converts done, but the raiding will continue. That's the problem with the monks. They take so long. Look at them. They're just like, oh, we know, you know you're in trouble. We're coming to save you, but my book is too heavy and my staff weighs too much. I just cannot move fast enough. And in the meantime, Slam just losing so many villagers out here. And then as soon as Doubt sees the monks, he's just running away. And he's like, well, I've got a horse. I think this is a situation where Slam really wishes he had some missionaries and he could move a little bit faster. But yeah, really right now, uh, Doubt taking a huge amount of map control. And meanwhile, he has actually turned around in the north side as well, taking out the Trebs from Slam and pushing him right back once again. So this is not looking good for Slam. He's really on his last stand right now. And uh, it looks like the pressure has been relieved from Doubt's economy as well. No more raiding coming in, as Slam just has to divert everything to defending himself now. Yeah, indeed. Such a scrappy eco. Slam actually managed to save his traps, but Doubt now 40 pop ahead, putting on the pressure in the north. The south isn't really putting on too much of a threat as well. And there's still Cavaliers left. Not raiding at the moment, but still putting a lot of threat into the head of Slam as well. Yeah, I think what's really sensible by Doubt here is actually to add in some of these pikes, because if his units do get converted, the pikes are just going to be able to counter-attack his own units, I guess. Um, Slam, though, I guess he's really just holding on, hoping that he can get enough conversions to, uh, to eventually turn this one around. And if we look at the minimap, we can see that Slam still has control of the majority of the gold that's left on this map. I don't see any gold uh, that Doubt is taking right now. And if we look at his gold count, he's only got 48 gold in the bank, which is another reason why he's switching into Halbs right here. Uh, however, Slam will lose this town center in the south. There's just no units at all that can come and, uh, and save him here. The TC is going to go down to the Cavalier, and all of those villagers are going to be massacred. And I think with that, I mean, I really feel like Slam just doesn't have what it takes now to, to bring this game back. Too much of his economy is going to be lost, all of these villagers. Um, and yeah, even without gold, I feel like Doubt has enough now to, to finish this. And there yeah, you go. Now with the switch to Harbadiers. Oh, it's, it's GG. GG. Doubt is going to get the win. Slam, calling it, and I think it was the right call, to be honest. It was really not looking like he was going to be able to hold that any longer. He held out for a long time. He did a really good job, but all in all, Doubt with the Cavalier being able to push this one right back. And I'm really impressed by Doubt, actually. He did a, he had a great game. Um, he dealt with the pressure from Slam very well, defending with just a couple of Mangonels, and that put him into a great position to push out in the Imperial Age and just take that game... And, and just own it. It was great. Yeah, indeed. And Doubt, kind of as we predicted, the guy who likes to go into the long games, wants to get up too early to see this, wants to get his farm eco rolling, and then tries to defend, tries to stay very cost efficient, and then let just his eco win the game for him. And again, beautiful execution by Doubt. And I'm really impressed how well he's playing here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's amazing because Doubt is going to progress once again into the Grand Finals. Doubt, after winning that game, will be in the Grand Final of our event for the second time. Remember, back to Battle for Angkor, it was a Viper versus Doubt Final. And it looks like, well, it could certainly happen again as Slam drops down to the lower bracket where he will face the Viper for the last grand final spot. So we're going to be seeing Viper versus Slam next coming your way in just a moment's time. But my goodness me, I can't believe that it's going to be Doubt and either Slam or Viper in the final because... We even introduced the qualification stage this tournament, and we've had so many amazing players come through, and we're seeing nearly the same results once again. So it's awesome, and uh, almost a little bit too good to be true. <laughs> indeed, indeed. 